you brothers and sisters for your participation uh, within the class on the Sabbath. And we're going to have uh, a two-part lesson today, okay? All right, lawyer will be back in a moment because there was a key book we needed for the class, so he's going to join us in one moment. So he, he went to get that, and he'll be right back. But in the meantime, I wanted to go over a few things, okay? Now, I've noticed that uh, just for edifying, that there are certain scenarios in which Christ says, those that are of the law, quote unquote, that means they want to execute all the penalties of the law. They, they strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, which means they'll strain at the smallest things, but yet they would ignore the things that are really important towards salvation and unity. Now, I want to put this out there real quick that the reason we named ourselves the Gathering of Christ Church is because we're gathering unto Christ. Okay, now the reason why we use Christ's name as far as sometimes we say Jesus for those who, if we say it to Hebrew to, they would have no idea who we were talking about. So we'll say Jesus or we'll say Christ, even though Christ was not in the ancient Hebrew. Okay, even though they were calling him the anointed in Hebrew during his time. But we speak in a language that's easy to be understood. And that's why we call ourselves the gathering of Christ. It's gathering to the anointed. But when people come to the, the knowledge of our understanding and, ready and, 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 and are prepared to grow to the next level, then we explain to them the Hebrew and say, well, listen, in church, we called him Jesus, but that's not his name. There was no J's during Christ's time, okay? And his name wasn't Christ, it was anointed. So we would give them the Hebrew interpretation opposed to the English. Okay, the reason we are titled in English is because the majority of our people is speaking in English. And let me give you that, that scripture real quick. Let's go to Isaiah the 28th chapter real quick. Isaiah 28 and 9. And I'm saying this because sometimes the, the edification and the gospel get diverted by others who would like to point to things like, well, why do they say Christ? Instead of focusing on the content, okay, and the message that could help deliver our people. Let's read Isaiah 28 and start at 9. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? The Bible asks, whom shall the Most High teach knowledge? Read. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That them are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So we have to realize that those that would learn the knowledge are like little babies. They must come weaned from the milk, drawn from the breast like a newborn baby. So we can't just give the people meat starting out in this understanding. Okay? And that's another reason why we speak words easy to be understood. Okay? So when we say Christ, Jesus, God, these are words that our people who are really newborn babes to the truth understands already. We just now have to give them the higher knowledge to the God, Jesus, and Christ they, they came to learn in the Christian church. We have to give them the understanding, the truth concerning those titles, and then we give them the Hebrew. Okay, but here's the point I wanted to make. Read. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Yes. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Go ahead. For with stammering lips. For with a stammering lips. And another tongue. And another tongue. Will he speak to his people? Will he speak to his people? So obviously there was knowledge through divine spirit to the prophets, even to Isaiah, that the Most High at the end times would be speaking to his people in another language. You understand? 
So we speak in a language that's easy to be understood lest we be barbarians to our own people who understand English. When I say Jesus, they know exactly who I'm speaking of. When I say Christ, they know exactly who I'm speaking of because they've learned these titles from youth. So us being teachers must actually condescend to the lowest level, like the scriptures say, and be able to teach on our people's level first. And then we teach them the truth concerning Christ's mission and his true name and how to pray and what the mission was and how it's how it's more strength to call on Christ or, or call for Christ's power, the Holy Spirit power and the Most High's power in the holy name. See, and then they learn the importance of it. But the majority of our people out there know him as Christ, know him as Jesus. So we're not going to title the church in Hebrew, okay, the gathering in Hebrew, Christ the anointed in Hebrew, and Yeshua's name at the end of it in Hebrew. We're going to call it the gathering of Christ church, all right? And we're doing this because these are words easily be understood for those that are already learning in the Bible. Once they get that understanding, boom. We take them to the next level of understanding, including the Hebrew. All praises be to the Most High. Now, one other thing I wanted to touch on today, okay? A key thing. Now that the majority of our people are waking up to the truth concerning who they are, that we are the Hebrews, we are the original bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all praises be to the Most High, Ahai, Bashim, Yeshia for revealing that information to us. When we first learn the truth, we usually deal with the schoolmaster first, which is the law, okay? The majority of time when we find the truth, we wanna know, okay, what are the rules uh, of being an Israelite? What, how do we be an Israelite? What is the culture? What are the rules? And it usually take us into the physical law, which is good. But there's a higher understanding. All right. Now, I'm putting this out there because many of us who knew Christ before, when I said who knew Christ before, who believed the Most High sent a son in this earth to represent him and to be sacrificed. It's many brothers and sisters who knew this even before you found out you were a Hebrew. That was correct. It's just that the Catholic Church was deceiving us and to follow in another Christ using those same attributes, okay? So I'm saying this because you have many Hebrews who came out of the Catholic Church, who learned the law, and then they'll run into somebody and begin to deny Christ. They'll begin to, to think that, okay, because I was lied about everything else, now I must question whether or not Christ was sent as the Son of God. And they'll do this through what they would call Chester Torah teachings. They'll claim, we just deal with the Old Testament and we can prove to you that you should not be in the New Testament or dealing with Christ or dealing with the anointed Savior, Yeshua. And they will try to use tactful, uh, 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 I would call, manipulations through scriptures to make you believe that following Christ is worshiping another God. No, that's not the case at all. If you're following Christ, Christ is leading you to that God. He's showing you how to please that God. It's not worshiping Christ and worshiping the Most High. You're worshiping the Most High through the anointed Savior who came and showed the path, the way to the Father, okay? Now I'm putting this out there on an elementary level because many of us would run into this. You'll run into someone who might claim that, well, the, the Torah says there should be no other God beside me. Well, there is no other God beside the Most High. He's the highest of all. God. There is no one beside him. Okay? There is no one outside of the Father. He's the top. He's the pinnacle. But he sent his son. 
who's part of the Godhead. Let me show you. Give me an example. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 7 to give that example. So they'll say there's no other God to be worshipped beside me. Well, hold up now. We follow Christ, but we're not making Christ into a separate God against the Most High. All right. The same way the Most High sent men all through scriptures, he sent Christ. The same way he sent the anointed uh, 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 prophets in the past that was chosen in the past. It wasn't us choosing these prophets over the Most High. Okay. Let's read it real quick. 1 John 5 and 7. I don't need you to pull that out. 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. Yes. For there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. That's three that bear record from the beginning when the heavens and earth were created. Read. The Father. The Father. The Word. The Word, which is Christ. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three are one. You understand that? That means these three are in agreement with each other. Christ is the spirit that came out of the Father from the beginning. And that was before earth was created. Okay. The Holy Spirit was a mirror image of the Most High in the feminine. That came out of him. And then the Holy Spirit and the Most High created the Son. And those three bear record of this whole universe. They were there from the beginning. It was that spirit that was sent in the earth to turn us back to the Father. Okay? So we follow Christ. Christ never said make him a God to be worshipped. That something happened through paganism. Christ said this is how you pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Okay? So Christ never said use him as a pinnacle or a God to, to challenge the God of all gods. That's something happened through paganism. The mistake we make, brothers and sisters, as Hebrews, okay, we'll realize we were lied in Christianity and we'll run into these Torah followers that would make you believe, okay, well, since you were lied to, that they didn't tell you you were Hebrews, that they also gave you this Christo or this Christ that was pagan, that had nothing to do with the God of the Hebrews. And that's how they deceived the little babes out there, the people who are new, who are looking for culture. Yeah, you would get all the culture of Hebrews and learn the law and all that. But if you begin to deny Christ, you're better off staying in the Christian church. With all the culture of being Hebrews, it means nothing if you don't know Christ and Christ's mission and purpose. It means absolutely nothing. You'll be better off not even hearing the truth. Because at least in the church, you knew of a Savior. Even though you didn't know his name. Even though you didn't understand uh, what, what you learn now, you knew that his spirit bear witness of the Father. See? And a lot of us are getting caught up. And, and I'm going to show you this because the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. This was going on even during Christ's time. When Christ was walking on the earth and then you had Hebrews asking him, well, who, who are you? Who did... Who, who, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? And you had others who bear record of the Old Testament and realized that he was the one prophesied. Okay? And you had others deny Christ because they felt that he wasn't the one that would be sent to lead Israel. They were looking for another Messiah. Some was looking like the Sadducees for a Messiah to be reborn through reincarnation. Some of them were waiting for David to come back in reincarnation. Some of them were waiting for Elijah to come back in reincarnation. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people, including the Jewish Babylonian text, that's waiting for another Messiah or claiming that another Messiah will come through their bloodline. And they reject Christ. Okay, so I'm going to take this time so that we can 
dispel all these myths out there through the Torah followers concerning Christ. Okay, to, to dispel all these myths that they have made on Christ, claiming, oh, he's not the savior. He's not the anointed, that we need to wait for someone else. Well, if he's not the anointed, you need to give me the scriptures in the Old Testament to show me who is. It's, it's as if they'll shoot down Christ, who was sent, who, who bear record of the father, without giving you any understanding of what to look for concerning the Messiah that's prophesied in the Old Testament. Right? One moment. One moment. Yeah, you can greet the door real quick. Yes, the water. Okay, the water. Okay, don't worry about it. It must be here then. Okay, All right. Let's, uh, law man, go to um, Luke 24 for me real quick. Mm -hmm. Right? Luke 24, verse 24. Luke 24. And I need you to read uh, the 25th verse. We're in Luke, the 24th chapter. And the 25th verse. Uh, St. Luke chapter 24, verse 25. Go ahead. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to so believe. When, so when they didn't believe during Christ's time, these were those that followed the Torah, who understood the Torah, who knew the law, who understood the culture of Israel. But how can you know all what the Torah says and the prophets say and not see a prophecy before you and not understand that he was the one spoken of. Read. Uh, o fools and slow of heart. O fools and slow of heart. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. To believe all that the prophets has spoken. That means we can't take peace of that and ignore the prophecies concerning the anointed savior that would come according to the Torah, which means we could teach the whole uh, uh, walk of Christ from birth to death to resurrection to whom coming back again without the New Testament. Okay, without the New Testament. Why? Because the New Testament was not compiled during Christ's time. Okay, so Christ was able to teach himself out of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. Read. Uh, verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Did you know that Christ had to suffer these things, that he would have to come and be a martyr for the people? That it was prophesied in the Old Testament that he would be like a lamb? Like, like, like being led to the slaughter? Did you know that that was in Scripture? What I'm, what I'm pointing out here is, brothers and sisters, it seems as if when we first find the truth, we link so more to the, the schoolmaster side of things or the law side of things mm. to the point we forget the, the main purpose. The main purpose is to understand the anointed savior that would come to help us through this. That's the main purpose of this. Even when it came to the physical law that was given to Moses, it wasn't originally made to be a hindrance or death to us. Man made it that way. But that's going off point. Let me finish going here, going into these scriptures to show you what how Christ dealt with those Torah followers. Okay, because I'm saying this is because many will try to look at us or look at others and try to judge the outward appearance on whether or not we fit their specifics of what an Israelite is. OK, based on how we look or probably what we wear. And they'll they'll miss the key point that I'm a Hebrew through blood, regardless of how I look on the outside. And that's the same with all of us. OK, and they'll miss the true purpose by trying to study us and study the outward appearance. 
without and by doing so ignoring the content ignoring the spirit the Holy Spirit that's being used to wake up so many people and guide them back to the Father and show the key principles that's written in Scripture so they'll study look and say well what's going on with this and the law say this and the law say that do you know they did the same thing to Christ and the disciples and I'm going to show you some examples of that in a moment. But first read, go ahead. Uh, 27. And beginning at Moses. And beginning at Moses. And all the prophets. And all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So what did Christ do? He expounded unto them all in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he told them, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe. Okay, he was telling them, listen, do you know I'm the one that sent? That's what he said. And then he went through the whole Old Testament and showed himself. And they bear record and witness of him physically fulfilling all these prophecies before their eyes. Okay, but still was willing to deny him. Okay, why? Some for different purposes. One key thing was because of authority. They was they were sought for for knowledge. They were sought to for knowledge and understanding before Christ came on the scene. They were the authority established by the Roman Empire. So one thing was their ego based on their position. If he's the one, think about it. If Christ is the anointed savior, with the information to free the people and have more understanding than any one of the Hebrews that are out there at, during his time, they are afraid that if he is the one, then not only should the people under us be, should be following, we should be following this too. Let's get that where they said we must kill him or the Romans are going to take our position in place. Uh, St. John chapter 11. See, but Nicodemus was smart. I'm going to tell you this. Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees that understood that Christ be a record to the truth. So what he did was he snuck at night. <laughs> it didn't affect his congregation. It didn't affect the people that was under him. But he snuck at night to learn under Christ and learn the truth so that at least he can teach it amongst the people and guide them towards the Holy Spirit. Read on. Read uh, that piece real quick. I'm going to read here in the book of uh, St. John chapter 11, verse 43. Come on. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with about was bound about with a napkin. Come on. Yeshua saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yeshua did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Yeshua had done. Go ahead. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, So here it is. There was a witness. There was many witnesses that through the Holy Spirit, this man was able to w <laughs> call back people from the dead, Yeshua, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, they could have took in one or two stances on this. They could have took stances and saying, well, listen, he's dealing with some power from on high that we should follow. He, he was the one prophesied. Or they could take another stance. Now, mind you, for those who actually want to research history, all right, these miracles that Christ did is not just re written up in the Holy Scriptures, okay? A lot of these miracles are contained in Roman documents, in, Rome, in the Roman Canaan that they kept through Roman Caesars during Christ's time. So his accounts and what they were speaking of concerning him are in public record outside of the Hebrews records. So here it is. Christ rose Lazarus from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Read. 
uh, 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone. It says, if we leave him alone, if we don't deal with him, read. All men will believe on him. All men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So they was afraid that the Romans would take away their authority. If, because why? It could no longer be hid that this man walking on the earth, Yeshia, the anointed at that time, had power from on high that could raise people from the dead, that could heal lost limbs. Everything you, he, he could actually rematerialize someone's arm. He could raise people from the dead and he never sp spoke any malice or evil towards anyone. He was fulfilling all the records that prophesied concerning him. And what happened? They say we must do something against him. Why? Because if this be become, become famous amongst those that are following us and, and that are following our doctrine and that are under us, these people are going to leave our power and control and go under him. And therefore, the Roman Empire would have no need for us as leaders to tell you that the Romans were funding the Hebrew leaders during that time to keep us enslaved, spiritually enslaved, even those that were under the law. See, they were still controlling us, even using the Torah and Moses' law. We still wasn't free. Because the Romans had power over our leaders. Are you following me here? Okay, so they say we must do something against them. Read. 49. Come on. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, Come on. said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. He, he, Caiaphas stood up and said, You know nothing at all. Read. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. It's expedient for us that one man should die for the people. And that the whole nation perish not. That the whole nation perish, perish, perisheth not. So even Caiaphas, a studier of the Old Testament, understood according to the prophecies he, he has read, that he read, that somebody had to come and die for the people. Okay, a man needed to come in the earth and die for, the, for his people, the children of Israel. Read that again. Uh, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, Come on. said unto them, ye know nothing at all. You know nothing at all, go ahead. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, that the whole nation should, should perish not. So there was prophecy concerning a man coming and dying for the nation. That the Most High would put his sin on this one man that was sent in the earth so that we as a people, the nation of Israel, could receive the adoption of sons given through Abraham down to Isaac and Jacob. Without this sacrifice and the punishments and curses would stay on the people, on us forever. See? And by default, other nations would stay blessed over us without any opportunity of fulfilling that promise that was given to our fathers. We will be a lost bloodline forever without these prophecies, without him, the Most High, needing to send a man to die for our sins. Now, mind you, all we need to do is to understand who that man is and follow him, which is simple, back to the Father to receive these promises. That's simple. Now imagine those who know these prophecies are written in the Old Testament, that one should die concerning the nation and still deny him. There's no way back, which means it doesn't matter if you're following the law down to the letter. If you reject Christ, brothers and sisters, you are considered a Gentile without the promise. 
You can have the fringes on. You can have everything. You can not eat pork. You can do all the things the law that, that's contained in the law. If you deny Christ, you cannot get the promise because the promise is paid through Christ based on our disobedience. The Most High had to send one. And the chastisement of us would be on him so that he, he would stop whipping us. So you are not a Jew or an Israelite if you have denied Christ. You are not an Israelite. It doesn't matter if your people came off of the cargo slave ships. It doesn't matter if your bloodline go directly to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're denying Christ, you are not an Israelite. Okay? Because the nation now comes through him. Okay? That's who an Israelite. One is not an Israelite that's one is not a Jew that's a Jew outwardly. And I'm putting that out there because you have many people now and I, I would call these, these people spiritual scavengers that only follow the Torah who are now aiming their direction towards the Hebrews that are, that are coming to the truth that the Most High is waking them up through the Spirit of Christ all through the earth. Not so that they can now learn the truth and deny the Savior. But you got these spiritual scavengers who have knowledge of the law and know more of the Old Testament than they do, than those they're going after. Okay? And they'll cleave to these young people and say, well, look at this and look at that and look at this. See? Yeah, you, you're right. You got woke up to the truth. We are the Israelites, but you need to put Christ down. You need to put the anointed Savior down. You don't need to follow him. Then they'll give you little tricks. They'll try to play little tricks on you. Like it tell you that this king would not have a son. So if, if Christ came down through this lineage, how can Christ be the king or the anointed savior through lineage if it says this king wouldn't have a son? They would deceive you because you have no knowledge of what the scriptures are speaking of being a newborn child in the word, being a babe. It's not saying that that king wouldn't have a son. It's saying that because of captivity, that king would not have a son to continue on the throne of David. That's what that's talking about, because in the scriptures, it showed where the king had a son. So you have to watch out for these spiritual vipers who are looking for any little thing to dissuade you from the bigger picture, which is the anointed savior. OK. And, and, and I'm saying that straight off. I'm saying that don't let anyone dissuade you from the spirit. The truth that comes through. And I'm going to say this. All right. Paul says that he became all things to all men that he he could gain a few. To the people under the law, he became a Jew for those uh, that didn't understand the law he became he was able to condescend to their level and I'm saying this brothers and sisters you would have some that would try to examine us and look at the outward appearance and make that a pretext or a stumbling block to say well let's focus on this and not the content and I'll say this brothers and sisters if the physical thing of what you see dissuades you or could dissuade you, we would rather you turn your picture around and just listen to the content and study the word. So that we're not a stumbling block. Okay? So don't even look at the outward. Don't even look at who's talking and all that. Listen to the content and go into your book and receive the spirit that's coming. And then you discern whether or not the spirit is of the most high. That's how you do it. But let no one say, well, look, they don't wear this or they don't look like this or they don't look like that. OK, the Holy Spirit works with those of wisdom and knowledge to understand how to get to the people. All right. And I will put that out there. The Holy Spirit works and give wisdom to teachers on how to get to the people. 
how to get to the people. And I'm going to say that over and over again. And I'm going to give you one more example, then I'm going to go into the Old Testament. Let's go to, to where the disciples, I think it's Matthew 5, I mean Matthew 12. It, it was shown where the disciples was going through the, uh, the corn. They're going on the Sabbath day. I'm going to give you an example real quick how people are trying to use an example and say that Christ is out of the spirit or or anyone that followed Christ is out of the spirit if they're not doing exactly what I feel an Israelite should be doing. Hmm. Read it. Uh, say Matthew chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. At that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were in hunger. Go ahead. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Your disciples is doing what? That which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. That which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now here it is. The disciples were out working, spreading the word. They were being led by the anointed Savior. And now some, I would call, Torah police. It's out amongst Christ and the disciples with some law. They used to wear these phylacteries around their necks, brothers and sisters, where if you broke a law or what they perceived was a law of the Torah, then they would pull out the law right there in front of you and started reading it <laughs> like a citation against you. So they come out, of, and, and my question is, and when I read this, you know, I had to laugh. The first thing came to my mind is if you wasn't supposed to be out there dealing with corn on the Sabbath day, then how can you be out there citing these brothers and these brothers that are out there? Aren't you breaking the law telling them that they shouldn't be out there? What are you doing out there? And I'm just using this as a prime example of others that would try to judge someone according to the law or try to look down or belittle someone and say, I'm higher in the law than you are. When you're breaking the same law. Okay. Read it again. Uh, verse 2. Come on. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Go ahead. Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Come on. But he said unto them, Have ye not read which David, or what David did when he was in hunger? So now he's using the same law they're going into. Did you not read when David, our king, was a hungry? That's when David was running from Saul's men, when Saul was seeking to kill David. So now he's going into a story that they can relate to in the Torah. See? Read. In the Tanakh. Read. Have you not read what David did when he was in hunger? And, that they, and they that were with him? Go ahead. How he entered into the house of God and did. Go ahead. How he did enter into the house of God. He entered into the house of the Most High. And did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat. So what did David do? On the Sabbath day. Go ahead. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat which was not lawful for him to eat, which means there was showbread that only the priest could eat, Levi could eat, according to the law during David's time. But David was able, for the sake of grace, because it was showing grace even in the Old Testament, to go into the holies of holies and go to where the priests were and take the showbread that only the priest could eat only to feed his men, to nourish them through this. Now, if it wasn't for that grace, to nourish those men by them breaking that particular law, then David and his men would have been destroyed. Then where's our savior? So he's shown an example that brothers and sisters have went away from the spirit of the law. Okay. The most high didn't make the law to put us in bonds to men so that a man can look at you and say, well, you're not on this level or you're on this level because you don't follow this law. 
The law wasn't made so we can measure who's more spiritual. The law wasn't made for that. But that's what people try to do. They'll say, look what we got on and look what they got on. Look how they look and look how we look. They are out of the spirit. They miss the whole law when they go into things like that. Because why? why? David had to break the law to live. And that's what Christ is showing. He broke what you would call the physical law. But did he really break the law? No. Why? Because the Most High knew that he would be appointed king to bring forth his son in the earth. See? But for man, they would look, they, they would have went to the temple and say, who's, who's you sitting there taking of the showbread? The Most High gave David grace, even in the Old Testament. Read. Uh, verse 5. Come on. Uh, Salaki, verse 4. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priest. Come on. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priest and the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Do you know that the priests work every Sabbath? <laughs> now the Bible says you shall not do no serve our work. But here it is. On the Sabbath day, the priests are receiving sacrifices and all that that will benefit the priesthood. They are sacrificing for the people. They are working uh, 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 uh at the holies of holies, they're working amongst the congregation. So do you know that the priests have to break the law every day? I mean, every Sabbath? That's what Christ is showing. If you look at the letter of the law, well, the priest was breaking it then because they were doing serve our work on the Sabbath day. See? And see, and this is what Christ is breaking down to those who were well studied in Torah. I see so many people so well stu studied in Torah that they missed the full point. If you don't understand Christ, you might as well put the Torah down because our people fell by breaking the Torah. If the Torah was the only way, we wouldn't be in this condition right now. Okay? We lost the Most High because we began to lose the spirit of why the Most High gave us the law in the first place. And it wasn't to, to show that you were better than someone else or you can follow something better than someone else. It was made so that we can understand our uh, civility amongst each other so that as a people we can serve the Most High as one. And not harm each other and not hurt each other. See, that's what the law was made. It was made for a holy people to be a holy people. Inwardly, our hearts, our minds, that's what the law was made. The law was, was made to change our thoughts, to make our heart right with the Most High. The law was not made so that someone can look at you or look at me and say, you're not what a Hebrew should be. I hope you're following me here. Finish reading what Yeshaya said here. Verse 6. But I say unto you, but I say unto you that in this place, in is, this in this place is one greater than the temple is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what that what this meaneth, he said, if you would have known what this meaneth, that there's someone greater than that temple, I, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He would have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. You would not have condemned the guiltless. OK, they would uh, they would have rather go. They, they would rather go under the mercy of Christ than the sacrifice of Moses. Because if you're under the sacrifice, you are done because there is no sacrifice for our sins. So if you're not under the mercy of Christ, he says, this if you even, if you even would, would know who you were speaking to here. You wouldn't be out here ridiculing me. For a law you don't even understand. Okay. Who do you think through the Holy Spirit was representing the father giving Moses the law? 
<laughs> See, and that's the pieces a lot of brothers and sisters are missing. And I'm not saying that there's not good qualities in the physical tour, in the law, and to do away with it. Let me make that crystal clear. The, the law stands. What we're putting out here is that you cannot accept the law, yet deny Christ, who through the Holy Spirit gave the law to Moses. Now, let me give you an, an example of Christ being prophesied in the Old Testament. And I'm going to go here next, and then I'm going to hit one more thing, and I, then our class will be done. All right? Let's go to Isaiah about the report. Now, I like to go here because every Torah follower or those who claim that Christ is not spoken of in the Old Testament and deny Christ can never get around this scripture. And, and, and I'm going to show you how great this chapter is, even the way it's, it, it starts out under Isaiah. It challenges those who would deny Christ in the future. It challenges you from the beginning, from the first word coming out of this chapter. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Isaiah 53 and 1. Who have believed our report? Look at that. He starts it out with a question challenging those who claim to be believers, who claim to be Israelites. Read it again. Who have believed our report? Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? When it says the arm of the Lord, that's an extension of the Most High. He's not the Most High. He's the arm of the Most High, but to whom the arm of the Most High is revealed. That's showing us that the arm of the Most High will not be revealed to everyone. Only those who would believe this report. And that's why a lot of people in this earth, including Torah followers and people who claim they're Hebrew, deny the arm of the Most High. That's why they, they, that's the reason they deny the arm of the Most High, because they don't believe this report. And if they could, and I know they wish they could, they wish they could just rip Isaiah 53 out because it destroys everything they're speaking of concerning Christ not being the Savior. It destroys everything they're trying to bring forth. And what they're saying, these Torah followers, and strictly Torah followers, are not these people who are, who are strictly Torah followers okay brothers and sisters they're not the example of what we should be following I'm going to make that crystal clear they're good in picking out separate laws and all that but they're deceiving you why because when I speak to these Torah followers I say well listen okay I'm not even going to go I'm not even going to go get, get, get it real quick I'm not even going to go into the New Testament with you. Let me see if you believe this report. <laughs> Read. Who have believed our report? Who have believed our report? Read. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Let's check out this report. Uh, verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He shall grow up a tender plant and a root out of a dry ground. That means Israel would be totally dried up, destroyed, and, and a root would come out of this destruction. Hmm. Who's that? Now, for those Torah followers who don't believe in Christ, they claim that that's talking about Israel. Well, that's a contradiction in itself. If Israel is dried out, dried up, how can there be a root out of Israel? <laughs> okay. It tell you that he shall be what? For he shall grow up before him. He as shall a, grow up before him. As a tender plant. A tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. A root out of a dry ground. How can Israel be the dry ground in the root too? 
That's two things there. That's two separate situations there. Now, if you believe this report, the dry ground is Israel, and something is going to come out of that dry ground. Who's that? Now, if you believe the report, we know that prophecy concerning Daniel give us four empires that would dry Israel up. And in that fourth empire, which is the Roman Empire, that tender plant will actually come out of that dry ground that's being, that, that was taken advantage of from the Babylonian Syrians, Persians and Medes, the Greeks, the Romans. Now Israel is dried up. We don't have anything. We're being totally destitute and paying tribute and subject to other people and other gods. So right at that fourth empire, someone came at that time. It was prophesied that he would come in the fourth beast, during the time of the fourth beast. So we, we would look at him according to Daniel's prophecies. If they believe in Daniel's prophecy, they follow the Torah. They would know that it's speaking of a man that would get crucified during the time of the fourth beast rule. See? So who was that? What man came on the scene during the time of the fourth, fourth beast who they would admit is the Roman Empire? Who was that man that it says would be crucified or would be killed in the midst of the week for the people? That he would be killed in the midst of the week for the people. In the midst of a jubilee for those people. Who's that? Now, I believe the report. And the report tells me, according to the New Testament, that's speaking of Christ. Who will be that light through darkness, who will be that tender plant out of a dry ground. Are you following me? Read. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Come on. He have no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Exactly, because when you look at the stories on Christ, even through the Roman Empire, he wasn't the most comely man. He didn't have the outward appearance of beauty when he was born or walked throughout the earth. Okay, of course, he changed into his glorified body once, his, once he was crucified and showed himself and people didn't even recognize him when he came back after the crucifixion. But while he walked on the earth, there was no form of comeliness because the Most High didn't want people... To, to, to focus on his outward like they focused on Solomon's outward beauty. So no one was going to follow him based on his looks. It was through the spirit of the Most High and the prophecies that bear record that he was the son of the God, son of the living God, not how nice he looked on the outward. So Isaiah prophesied a man that would come out of a dry ground who wasn't really that good looking compared to other men, other Hebrews. Read. Read this real quick. Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah 52 and 13 through 15. Come on. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. As many as were astonished or astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man. His visage was, was what? So marred, so marred more than any man, more than any man. Visage means the face. And his form than the sons of men. Then the in his form as the sons of men. So it's showing you through precept that Christ was not a real good looking man. That was prophesied. Through Isaiah. So I ask those that follow the Torah and don't believe in Christ who claim that Christ is some fictitious story that was made up through the pagans. OK, well, let's put the New Testament down and you show me who he is. Then, Who is Isaiah reporting on? Read uh, verse three. He is despised. This is Isaiah 53 and three. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So he's a what? A what? A he man? Is, he is despised and rejected of men, 
A man. A oh, what? A man. A what? A man. A man of sorrows. Of sorrows. And acquainted with grief. And acquainted with grief. So here it is. Isaiah is prophesying about a man. This report he's asking who will believe is of a man that would come. See? Read. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And acquainted with grief. Why? Because he had to bear the griefs and, and all the sin of our forefathers, even going back to Adam's sin. Okay? Through him, sin would be washed out of the earth. And then by default, we as a people, the children of Israel, who are in captivity under these other nations, could one day receive the promises of sons. That we would be delivered from America and the tyranny of America one day. If we followed him. We, why? Because the promises are next. It's through Christ's blood that we see light at the end of this. So if he's not our sacrifice and you don't believe this report, how do we get out of this? Be prepared to serve forever. Okay. Read. We hid as it were our faces from him. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now, now, that can't be Israel, because the Torah followers claim that this is all speaking of Israel, that Israel was despised, and what? This is what they say. That he was despised. That Israel was despised. And we esteemed him not. And Israel esteemed him not. Do that make any sense to you? <laughs> but if you believe the report... It's crystal clear. Read it again. He is despised. Christ is despised. That report that Christ was, uh, that, that, that Isaiah is speaking of, read. And rejected of men. And rejected of men. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. And acquainted with grief. And acquainted with griefs, read. And we hid as it were our faces from him. And we hid as it were our faces from him. This actually happened once the Pharisees and scribes looked to take Christ. The disciples had to run and actually when they caught Peter, he had to deny Christ and hide his face from him. Because they, they weren't only looking to crucify Christ. They were looking to crucify the next day, the men that was with him. So when they found Peter and said, wasn't you, I've seen you with him. He was like, no, no, no. It was prophesied that he would, that Peter would deny him. That's on one level. Here's another level. That's also speaking of those that follow the Torah and follow the Old Testament and deny Christ's prophecies in it. That he would do all these things for his people sent by the Father, prophesied through the Old Testament, and yet our people would still deny him. What did Christ do that would make you not accept him? What? Come on. And I'm speaking to, I know the Torah followers look at this too. Come on. Tell me what, what's so bad about Christ that we would deny him. And I'm speaking of the anointed savior, Yeshua, whom some of you call Yahushua. Some of you call Jesus. Some of you call Emmanuel. But what did he do? You know who I'm speaking of. What did he do so bad that you would want to deny him? And some people would say, well, some people would claim, well, he's trying to prop himself up to be equal with God. Where do you get that from? You haven't read of Christ. No place in scripture did Christ prop himself up to be worshipped or to be equal with, with the most high and say he's down with, he's, he's a God equal to the most high. You believe in the Catholic lies. But when you read the Bible, Christ never did that. Christ turned everything over to the Father. He said, I come in my Father's name. Okay? 
I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the who? The Father but by me. He was showing the new path back because why Israel as a people lost our way. So now the Most High would send a physical example in the earth and say, if you do everything this guy do, this, this, this man do, you are accepted. He will not vary from the path. Now that's a merciful and righteous power. That's a merciful and righteous God that would give us a physical example to say, okay, follow him in the way he do things and you will be accepted by me. He gave us a physical example so that we're without excuse. You can't say you don't know how to do the right things or whatever the case is. Or there's, he gave us no direction. He sent a direction that even Torah followers are denying. Read. Uh, verse 4. Come on. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Yet we esteem him stricken. And smitten of God. And smitten of God. And afflicted. And afflicted. And mind you, at the end of all this, when he was on the cross, being denied by a lot of our people, when he was being whipped under a Roman persecution and was crucified under a Roman capital punishment, you know what he said? He looked down on our people and he felt the pain of our people. Even those that was screaming, kill him, destroy him. And he looked up to the father and said, you know what? Forgive them for they know not what they do. How can anyone deny him? He asked the father to forgive because he, he knew the spirit of the devil had deceived our people. But he, he had to be the one. It was prophesied that he would need to go through this. Okay. Even at the Garden of Yosemite, he said, Father, when he, when he knew his, his hour was almost come, he asked the Father, Father, can you let this cup pass me? And then he said at the very end, he understood if it be thy will, let thy will be done. Let me go through with this for my people. Read. Uh, surely he have borne our griefs. Surely he have borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crucified, wounded for our sins. Read. He was bruised for our iniquities. The bruises were the nails that went through his wrists. That went through his feet. Now, someone break down to me who this is speaking of if it's not Christ. Read. Uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for for our sins. Read. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the chastisement of our peace. That means the Most High before Christ was at war with his people. Now either he get chastised that once for us. Or we get chastised forever from generation to generation. Without the curse being broken. So through that crucifixion, through all that whipping and destruction, the Most High allowed that to happen to one man so that he can have peace with us. And a generation will come, would come through that bloodline who would receive the adoption of sons. We are that generation. We are the generation that will receive the promises of sons based on that sacrifice. But that's if we believe this report. And I'm going to say this for those who don't believe the report. If Christ is not the sacrifice, I'm speaking to you Torah followers. Why aren't you sacrificing? You're still living under the grace of Christ because the Most High haven't punished you yet. He haven't killed you for not sacrificing. Because why? 
The chastisement was on his son. You're still living under the same grace you're denying. That's why the Most High haven't punished you yet for not sacrificing. Because he put your sins on the son. Someone sacrificed was sacrificed for you. That's why you're not sacrificing. And I hear all these Torah followers claiming, oh, we got to follow the law. We got to do this. And that's fine. But also in the law, it means a physical sacrifice for each sin. You are committing. You know another reason why you can't sacrifice? Because there's, there's not a priest to sacrifice for you. Okay. <laughs> That's why you can't sacrifice. All right. And guess who our priest is? Okay. Yeah, you got it. He's the sacrifice. He's the anointed king that took his blood on the heaven to the heavenly tabernacle. And if you read in the Old Testament, Solomon's temple in the tabernacle that was built on earth was a facsimile of the heavenly. So there's another altar in the heavens that our priest had to take his blood for our sins so that the Most High could make peace between us and him to receive the adoption of sons. See that? So if don't claim that you're not down with Christ. But, st but still, you're not sacrificing. Where's your sacrifice? Then they'll claim, well, we, gotta, we can't sacrifice until we're back in Jerusalem. What scripture is that? There's animals all over the place you can buy. You don't have to be in Jerusalem. Even our people in the Old Testament, when they were in other areas, they sacrificed in the areas they were in. They weren't, all of them weren't in Jerusalem. So you're living under the grace of Christ while denying his power and, and denying his majesty and his purpose. And if you deny Christ, you deny the one who sent him. So don't claim you're following the Most High either. You've been bewitched. And that's going to lead me to my next point. Go ahead. Uh, this is verse, uh, the verse of verse 5. Come on. Our peace was upon him. Our peace was upon him, speaking of Christ. And with his stripes we are healed. With Christ's stripes we are healed. That's how the nation of Israel is healed. Without a sacrifice, we would continue to be whipped forever. See? Read. Uh, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. All us like sheep. He's speaking of the children of Israel now. All of God's people like sheep has gone astray. Read. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on, on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord have laid on him the sin of us all. Now check that out. That means our sins were laid on this one man. Why? Because we break the law all the time. Inadvertently, we're breaking laws we, haven't, we, we don't even know about. But yet, Christ's blood covers them in our ignorance. Now, those that are following the Torah and claim that they're just following everything they see and trying to do everything to the letter and, and, and think that they're doing everything right, what good is it if you're denying Isaiah's report. You might as well go out there and do whatever you want to do. You're not an Israelite if you're, if you're denying Christ. And I don't care what your bloodline is. Because you're not covered. Finish reading. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Come on. We have all turned one to his own way. We are all turned to our own way, read. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the Lord have laid on him the sins of us all, read. Verse 7. Uh, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. So who this talking about for the Torah followers? He was what? He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He was brought to the lamb to he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Just like a, a sheep 
is get, get, getting shared to be killed like the one he just seen get destroyed, get killed. And yet the sheep would just sit there and wait for, for their turn. Who was that? That was Christ. They were beating him. They were trying to mock him. And believe it or not, they were actually trying to get him to denounce his position in the earth also. Who, like who he was sent. They were trying to get him to say other things. And he was like, I'm not going to say nothing. Do you say you're the king? No, you say that. I never say it. I'm not here. Because why? He, he told them his kingdom wasn't of that time. He came at that time to show us the way and be the sacrifice. He's coming back as king. Read. He was oppressed and was afflicted. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Go ahead. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Go ahead. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his, his generation? And who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? Now, this is speaking of how he was taken out of prison. He was brought before the people. Pontius Pilate said, well, listen, I have no fault with this man. I wash my hands of him. Okay. He says there's a custom that we have in agreement with the Jews that we, we let loose one prisoner each year. I don't see no fault with this guy. After, and they beat Christ enough to where it was like, okay, he was punished enough, wasn't he? And that punishment is written of Isaiah's report in Isaiah's report here. And, I, and the people rose up and say, well, listen, don't release him. Give us Barabbas. We'd rather you give us the most evil and despicable person that have ever been in prison than to release him because he was a threat spiritually to their positions. Give us Barabbas. Kill him. What did Christ do? Read Christ's stories. There's nothing in none of his, none of the gospels that would make one believe that he, this is an evil person or did anything wrong. Why would people want to deny him? Read. Uh, verse 8. Go ahead. Uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment. He was taken from prison, prison and from judgment. Read. Who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? Read. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. He was what? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. The only way someone can be cut out of the land of the living is to be killed. So now in this report Isaiah have here, has here, he's, he's saying what? He was cut out of the what? Out of the land of the living. For what? The transgression, for the transgression of my people. For the transgression of Israel? For the transgression of my people. This man was killed for the sins of Israel. Now this is what the, those that don't believe the report is saying. Israel was killed for the sins of Israel. That's why they hate when you go to this scripture here. So when I deal with these non-believers who claim they're Israelites and follow the Torah and Tanakh, I go straight here. So you mean, okay, let's make this straight. The report is that Israel was killed for Israel. Did that make any sense to you? You would rather have it make no sense at all than to accept Christ was sent. Read. Verse 9. Come on. And he made his grave with the wicked. And he made his grave with the wicked. Why? Because Christ was crucified between two sinners. He made his grave with the wicked. Read. And with the rich in his death. And with the rich and his death. Because he had done no violence. He done no violence. Neither was there any. Now, how can this be Israel when we can look all through the Old Testament and see Israel doing violence? <laughs> you can see us doing violence all through the Old Testament, all through scriptures. It tell you this man would come into the earth and not use violence. Who is it speaking of? 
Read on. Uh, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the, the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Show me one thing that Christ said evil or wrong against, wrong against anyone. There was no gall in his mouth. He didn't speak evil towards people. He just told the truth. And usually the truth gets you crucified. He knew what was in the hearts of the men that were looking to crucify him. He knew what was in their hearts. And he told the truth concerning them. Read. Uh, verse 10. Come on. Yet it pleased the Most High to bruise him. It pleased the Most High to have the Romans beat him with a cat nine tail. Read. He hath put him to grief. When, he, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Make his soul a what? An offering for sin. How can Israel be an offering for Israel? Like the example in the Old Testament when it comes to offerings, the Most High would require Israel to get a sheep or other animals to, to be sacrificed, given to a priest to be sacrificed for them. Read that last part again. Yet it pleased the Most High to bruise him. Go ahead. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Okay, realize what this is speaking of. You have to look in the Old Testament and show how Israel brought forth offerings to the Most High, to the priest to be sacrificed for their sins. So what is Israel bringing to the Most High right here? What is Israel offering up? That's Christ. That's Christ right there. He, he's an offering for us. He's a sacrifice for us. Read. Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Come on. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. When it says, when it says he shall see his seed, and what? He shall prolong his days. And he shall prolong his days. It's not just speaking of Christ being the son of the most high, but Christ developed a seed in the earth mm -hmm. that would carry through and bring forth the true ministry. And that's the seed of sons. That's the seed of Israel that will receive the kingdom. And that's why the kingdom is for a few. Because a lot of us are going to deny Christ and claim just because we are the physical sons of Abraham, we should receive the promises. No, you are not counted for the seed. The seed is through Christ. See? Read. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And the pleasure of the Most High shall prosper in his hand. Go ahead. He shall see the travail of his soul. He shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He did what? And made intercession for the transgressors. The transgressors are the the transgressors right here is Israel. He made intercession. Now let's focus on that word there. Intercession is a mediator between Israel and the Most High. Israel cannot be Israel and the intercessor too. That's a go-between. Whom have believed mine report, and to whom the arm of the Most High is revealed. What is this showing? That the Most High gave the prophets and teachers, even Moses and all of them from the beginning, even starting from Adam, the revelation of one who would come in the earth to take away the sin that was placed, that was made in this earth from the beginning. They all knew who was prophesied to come, and they believed in that report. Do you? Because if you don't believe in the report, it doesn't matter how many fringes you have on. 
It doesn't matter whether or not you look like an Israelite and you go to every high holy day. It doesn't matter if you just stand in a corner and do nothing all day on the Sabbath with your lights out in a corner because you think you're following the Sabbath. None of that matters if you're not believing this report. So I put this out there and I challenge all my brothers and sisters that when you run into these Torah and these Tanakh followers, be very careful because they're more skillful in the Old Testament than you. Do not engage them on their level. Because they will deceive you and they will trip you up because they have more knowledge of the Torah and the Tanakh than you do. You have to you have to pull them up. And I'm saying pull them up because you're already on a higher level than them. If you believe in Christ, you must pull them up to your level by going straight to Isaiah 53 and saying, listen, I'm not here for you to pull contradictions and try to confuse me. I need you to let me know what side of this report you're on. OK. I'm not you're not going to engage me in a, a social media debate on whether or not Christ is the Savior. I know what he means to me, and I know what it means for us if he's not the Savior. We're doomed. We're doomed. So I'm not even going to allow you to even bring me into a realm to question the arm of the Most High. I need you to, I'm willing to hear what you have to say, brother, and you can tell them straight off. You can have the Torah and these guys be running around rolling the Torah out and they got Hebrew written on their body and all this and Hebrew all, yeah. But, we, you know, we don't follow him. Then they try to mock Christ like those who did the same thing during his time. Oh, yeah, we don't follow JC and all that. These are the same people who put a crown of thorns around Christ's head and mocked him and says, now look at him, the king of the Jews. They wouldn't be the first mockers and they will not be the last. OK, so I'm putting this out there for brothers and sisters to be wise. To have people engage you first with the understanding of the savior of Christ and then you build from there. OK, I'm not on some some crusade to force someone to receive their salvation. To force someone to receive and accept their sacrifice. That is not my crusade. I'm not going to fight back and forth and argue whether or not Christ is the savior and the anointed sent to save our people. That's not open for a debate. And that's why you, you see Isaiah debating it? No. Isaiah is coming straight out and saying and ask, who shall believe my report? This report and to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. I'm just going to lay it out how the Holy Spirit have revealed it to me. That's what Isaiah did. And if you believe the report, then you are like they who believed in Christ when he walked the earth. You are they who are in Christ who believe on him now going backwards like Isaiah believed on him going forward. Do you understand? But if you don't believe the report, OK. All right. I can teach you of him, but I'm not going to batter you with this. OK, Christ is not your savior. Then you go ahead and find your sacrifice because you're going to need it, buddy. OK, where's your sacrifice if Christ is not your sacrifice? Last but not least, it's not just a Torah followers who are being led by Satan, deceiving us into questioning whether or not Christ is the anointed. I see the Muslims doing the same thing, trying to minimize Christ's position. Why? Because they know that Christ came from the, for the nation of Israel. And Ishmael don't hold no authoritative position in scriptures. So if it, it, it's, it's in their interest, the Arabs, to minimize Christ's position. And then I see these new ages and all that, even through science now and through history now, and everyone is questioning whether or not Christ existed. I'm hearing this now. Well, some people are now questioning whether or not he ever existed. You know what? And it's funny that everyone would like to deny Christ now that we found out that we're from his bloodline. 
When we thought we were somebody else, Christ was just spoken of all over the place by our oppressors and we had to accept him and everything and he was plastered. But when we found out that they were putting up Cesar Bogier, when we found out that they're not really the people, even the people who taught us of Christ is now denying him and going into some new age guru madness now. Did you notice that? As long as we believe we were somebody else, Christ existed. No soon as we began to find out that we're the people. Now we're questioning whether or not Israel existed. I hear, well, we don't even know if Israel really existed uh, in the Old Testament. The history is askew. We don't even know if Christ was on the earth. We, oh, you don't know now. Now that we've found ourselves, you want to lose our history. <laughs> Because they know it's us. So it's not just the Torah followers and those that are denying Christ. People that followed the Torah even during crisis time denied him. Let's read that in Paul's writings real quick. Believe it or not, I thought this was actually a two-part lesson, but I guess I'll pick up the Apocalypse of Paul next week on this. Yes, yes, sir. The sacrifice had to be uh, spotless too. So how could Israel, which sinned, yeah, sacrifice, be a sacrifice? Shapat made a great point that the sacrifice in the Old Testament, especially for the atonement of sins, the Day of Atonement, had to be a lamb without spot or blemish. If we're the sinners, we are blemished. How can we be the sinners with blemish and the sacrifice? Now, I'm speaking about us as a people, but Christ came without spot or blemish. Okay? So if you deny Christ, you know what? You're breaking all the laws. Understand that. The law is of none effect if you deny the one who gave the law. That's right. It was Christ at the mount sent by the Father to deliver his name and to deliver his law to a people. Christ always been the intercessor since the beginning. Since the beginning. And you see, but that's on a whole nother level. They're only looking at him from the time he was born in the earth and was want to look at the, the, the Joseph Mary side of Christ. But Christ have always existed. The spirit, the, the anointed spirit from the heavenly realm was bare record from the beginning with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And that's what they are ignoring. It was only that spirit that was pure from the beginning could save us from ourselves and put us back on the righteous path so that no matter what happened to us, yes, we were enslaved. Yes, we were killed in 70 AD. Yes, they hung us on trees like Galatians said they would. They did all the things. We're being persecuted till this day. The jails are packed with us. Revelation, the second chapter says, behold, the devil shall cast you into prison. Yes, we're still being persecuted. But we know through this sacrifice that that persecution has an end. See, we understand that there's a point of consummation that ends the tyranny against us. And I hope you all are understanding this because I'm going to tell you something is different. Something is seriously different happening in, in the earth right now. And it's happening through this media. And it's happening through social, the social networks and something is going on where this computer is a two-edged sword. Something is going on. And what it's, what it's doing, it's... it's, it, it's morally watering us down to the point where everyone has it's to the point where it's confusing everyone putting all this information out there so that we can't focus on what's important as far as salvation and building ourselves concerning truth now everyone and I'm telling you what's going on with social media now everyone is now has become an authority with an opinion because of social media 
And you know what? I think that I almost know that's on purpose. It's watering down and diluting the understanding. But no matter what you run into out there, brothers and sisters, if you deny Christ, if you don't believe this report, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. It doesn't matter what you find out. Nothing matters. It's over. It's finished. Okay. What you have there? Uh, you mentioned something about uh, Paul. Yeah, let me get that real quick. About uh, about when it talks about just because you are the seed of Abraham in Romans. Got it? Uh, uh, oh, you had it in Galatians? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go there. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. Let's start. Start at verse uh, 22. Go ahead. Uh, but the scripture have concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Yeshia, Mashiach, or Jesus Christ, might be given to them that believe. That might be given to them that believe. So the promises that's prophesied out of the Old Testament will only be given to those who believe. Mm -hmm. so I can start at 21. Go ahead. 20, 21st verse, go ahead. Is the law then against the promises of God? Is the law against the promises of the Most High? God forbid. No. For if there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That means you just cannot just have the law of Moses and think you're okay and you're going to make it through. Our people had the law of Moses. Look what happened to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's through the faith of Christ now. He's, he has developed a new seed who are Israelites. That now will receive the adoption of sons and all the other Israelites who are a bloodline of Israel. It doesn't matter. They will be purged. Read uh, 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Go ahead. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. To the bring. law was our schoolmaster. That means that these were steps. That, that was given to us. It was our schoolmaster, just like you have linear learning within school. You have kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Those are in the states who understand how the grades go. Okay. The law was the schoolmaster. That was the beginning. That was our schoolmaster to do what? To do what? To bring us unto Christ. To bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We're no longer under the schoolmaster. And it's speaking of the penalty that comes with breaking it also. Read. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So, Christ Jesus. So that's what makes us the children of the Most High now. Hmm. Through Christ. Even though we have the bloodline. Read that last part again. For ye are all children of God by faith in Yeshua. But before that, that piece before that. But, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For you are all children of God by faith in Yeshua. Go ahead. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. As many of you that have been baptized in Christ put on Christ. Read. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Now, when it says Jew or Greek, because the Israelites at this time were being called Hellenist. That were under the Greek rule. So Paul was saying, listen, our brothers may be acting like the Greeks, but if they accept Christ, they are now adapt, adopted back 
into the fold to receive the promises of Christ. The promises of Abraham. Read. For ye are all one in Yeshua. Come on. And if ye be Christus. If we belong to Christ. Then are ye Abraham's seed. Then are you Abraham's seed. In heirs according to the promise. In heirs according to the promise. So that if you are in Christ, then you are an Israelite. See, and this is where the church has got it twisted because they use that scripture to say, well, now all people can be spiritual Israelites. And it wasn't speaking of that. It was speaking of the Israelites whom Christ came for. If they accepted him, now they can get the adoption through bloodline all the way to Abraham. That's what it was speaking of there. That the Most High is able again to graft in his own people to give them the promise that was lost by our forefathers. And see, and that's why you have an Old Testament and a New Testament. You just can't grab half a book and say, ignore it. There's a reason why the book you're reading, the Torah followers, there's a reason it tell you it's the Old Testament. There's a reason it's the old one. Because we needed a new one. We fell from the old one. It's like we're going backwards and trying to go right under everything Moses gave us as if we wouldn't fall again. Doing it that way. There's a higher understanding that was given through the inspiration of spirit through Yeshua that we must grasp now to be really called the children of the Most High, to be called Israelites. So a Jew is not a Jew outwardly. The Most High, even Christ says, don't think because you have Abraham the father that, that, that you're the children of God. The Most High can raise up rocks to be his people. So it's deeper than just the bloodline. And I know we talk about bloodline, but if that's where your focus is and you're not in Christ, it doesn't matter. I mean, I see so many people that used to understand Christ in the Christian church, our people. And then you become a rebel against Christ. Once you find the truth of yourself, when it was Christ that was in the church that led you to the knowledge. Everything you learn in church wasn't bad. They gave you the fundamental foundation to understand Christ. And then we become puffed up because we find knowledge of ourselves and we attack. Christians and we attack the Roman Catholic Church and they should be attacked and then we turn around and attack the Savior the anointed spirit that was able to give us this truth you were in church asking for the understanding it was the Holy Spirit guiding you to where you are and then you'll come out of the church and then deny Christ in your learning in your upbringing Okay, that means you were better off in the Christian church. At least you had Christ and had knowledge of him. Okay. I need you to get the scripture where it says, uh, let them alone. Speaking of other people that was proud of and teaching. Where it says, let them alone. Yeah. One moment. You've got an axe, good. One moment.